Family peer support means having someone to walk the journey with me. We're not alone. What family peer support means to me is hope. Hope and connection. Being able to live in the present. Being heard, being understood, and finding out that you're not alone. And having hope. Hello and welcome to Montana's Peer Network Recovery Talks podcast. I'm Jim Haney and I'm here with two other wonderful staffers. Why don't you introduce yourself to the audience? Hi, I am Beth Ayers. I'm Family Peer Support Lead at MPN. And I am Kayla Myers. I am a Family Peer Supporter at MPN. Well, we had quite the experience. Uh, Last week, we went to, we flew to Chicago, and we went to the Federation of Families National Conference. I think I'm saying that right. Um, and it was quite the experience. It was really good. I went to theirs last year and really, really enjoyed it. And so really pushed for us to go again this year. Um, yeah, lots of great info, lots of great key speakers, workshops, um, just good to get around other people that are kind of doing the same work. Yeah, I would agree. It was definitely an experience. Um, I think when you, because we're, we're pretty spread out in Montana, and I think that we all know that we are doing the same work and have the same um values and visions that we're bringing to this workforce. And um, I think it was just really inspiring and also a really good reminder that these same um, people are like scattered all around the United States and being in a room full of those like-minded people and talking about the same visions and values. Um, yeah, it was, it was really uplifting and really, um, I learned a lot as well from from all the other different um, mindsets and thinking processes. So yeah, it's yeah. really cool. Yeah, yeah, I would I would agree. I um I think, you know, one of my one, you know, how some, you know, you go to stuff and then like what really sticks with you, you know. So here we are, like a week later and I keep thinking, you know, there's some stuff that just keeps coming back. I keep thinking about uh, the keynote speaker, Hassan Davis, and his um, his uh, presentation. And um, man, he had a lot of messages in there. There was um, the the whole, the theme, he called it the hope, hope dealers, calling all hope dealers, like that was really cool. And the book, he wrote that kid's book, like that empowering book, like that is sticking with me. And, um, and just, um, yeah, just his, his, his delivery, his energy, his, um, the message, uh, was just, it was really good. And I, um, you know, there was probably, what did he talk for an hour and, 20 minutes or yeah. yeah yeah I mean it was it was long and it was like we laughed we cheered I mean I had tears in my eyes in a number of points in his story telling mm -hmm. his story and how he was treated like the college thing going and going back and getting kicked out and going back and just and you know it was like wow it's like that was really powerful that was really, really powerful for me. So I think, yeah, Hassan was one of my favorite parts of of the conference. Just yeah, I would have I would have to agree. I think just his perseverance and being told no uh, is very familiar when you're starting any sort of I don't know, venture or, you know, trying to change how people view, you know, services, systems, um, and just that, that hope that he always had, just that he was going to keep doing what he was doing. And um, yeah, I really, really liked his, uh, his perseverance for sure. Yeah. Yeah. His mom kept encouraging him <laughs> with the, the notes or, you know, right. If you could see what I could see that message, you know, 
it's like, wow, it was just, yeah, very, very powerful, very powerful. He had a lot of um, little, like, I really love those little short phrases of a big, like a, you know, something you could talk a lot about. And Hassan had a ton of those, but just putting them into like a short little phrase, but like one of them was um, soft skills are essential oh, skills. That one right. was like really, really good. Right. Um, he said on, when he did the panel on Saturday, he said, um, when I can, when I can see you and me, then I can see you. And I think that that's, and that's where like connection and empathy and mm -hmm. encouragement starts. And I just thought mm -hmm. that was very, very, very profound. Even if you can just mm -hmm. see like a smidgen of you and somebody else, I think that's when we open up our eyes and our ears and our hearts for those mm -hmm. people. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, he had, he had a lot of them. He had a lot of good little, um, oh, and then he said, um, the other one was, um, we have to touch hearts before we before we talk to minds or touch minds. Mm -hmm. And that was another, yeah, he just, he was full of those good little mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. one, one sentence liners. Yeah. yeah. Some of the huge thing we could talk hours and hours and hours about. So, yeah. 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 And then we got to meet him. We got to meet him, right. Was it the next day, I think. And he was kind of standing in the back of the room at the end. And uh, Kayla, I know you got a good picture of you, you and Hassan, and uh, we should we should put that up in the we should put that up on here. Um, so that was kind of neat too, to, you know, when you meet somebody like that, like a keynote, and you kind of get to see him just as a regular person and talking with him, and he was like super friendly, and he had that connection to Montana, which was yeah. awesome too. Yeah, he was super relatable already for me because he has ADHD. And so when he was talking about all the different, so he has to put, he said, what, he had 125 slides. Yeah. And it was more yeah. just to like see something to trigger a thought or a yeah. talking point. And I related yeah. with it so much. So he was already relatable as a keynote speaker in that sense when I, I could see him in me, you know, that little part of, um, but yeah, talking to him afterwards, he was. He was very, very normal, low key. He even said, "If you guys need any, you guys need anything in Montana, let me know." And yeah, I'll, yeah, I'll come. And we're like, "Yeah, you should." Let us it know. would be cool. Let us know. It'd be cool. It would be cool to bring him out here, like you know, for the conference yeah. or something. Like that would be. Yeah. That would be. That would be great. I could listen to him for like it didn't feel like we were sitting there for an hour and a half listening to him. He that's how. Yeah. Inspiring of a journey he took us on. Yeah. For that hour yeah. and a half. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it was good. It was really good. So what else is what else is what what else is, is sticking with you after a week? What are you thinking about? I went to some really good workshops um where there's some just kind of yeah, key things that have stuck with me since then. Um I'll just mention one of them right now. So I did this um div See what it was called design theory in behavioral health systems something like that using design and really what it talked about is that a lot of times and I think this goes back to what we do as family peer supporters but a lot of times we think we know what somebody wants and so we create it and then we give it to them and then we ask what they think instead of really asking what they think at the beginning before we create something for them um and I think that really yeah, I took that away, you know, how mm -hmm. even as a family peer supporter, sometimes I can think like, I know what the family wants or what, you know, they need, but to really get their, you know, their, um, their ideas, inputs and things like that at the beginning of the process. And then just really how to take a huge complicated system and kind of look at it in its individual parts and then try to, you know, look at where, the parts are that you can change or that you can help that process. So it was really interesting. Mm -hmm. What about for you, Kayla? Yeah, I went to um, coach approach and adaptive leadership, which was like not what I thought it was going to be at all. And it was like just the place and chair I needed to be in, in that mm -hmm. moment. And it was like a three and a half hour 
workshop and I was like I don't think I'm gonna make it for the whole for the long I I had another plan to kind of like exit if it wasn't Mm -hmm. and no I sat there and was super engaged and intrigued the entire I even did the follow-up three and a half hour like follow-up workshop to it the next day um and I think for I mean, I'm going to, I'm going to talk from an ex- my experience and I, just from other people's experiences that I've, who I've also talked to, who have a lot of life experience to offer other individuals. And when you are healing and um, forgiving and processing all of our lived experiences, and you feel like you're kind of on the other side of it, it's really hard to not talk at people with that life experience and so um it's really this like mindset of remembering you know I didn't want to be talked at when I was in it and Mm -hmm. going through it I wanted to be heard heard seen and um and felt feeling safe within that conversation Mm -hmm. and so really I think the biggest takeaway in that for me was all of us have the answers to the question that we're asking within each of us. Like we know the answer to the question we're asking another individual. And I think I think as human beings, it's in our nature to when we hear something asked to us, or if we if we're in a conversation, we're we're listening to respond with mm-hmm. either an answer or with a, you know, a follow-up. Mm-hmm. But when you're listening to make a person feel safe, seen, and heard, you're listening to validate what they're saying to you to make sure that you're hearing it and seeing it correctly, because we mm-hmm. also have our own life experiences and our own lenses. Sure. And our own, yeah. Um, and so really following what, up with that validation, you know, statement, because then it also validates that that they're being listened to. And it also validates the way I perceived it. And so... Mm-hmm then you can follow up with a question to Mm. that, Mm -hmm. you know, if they say, yes, that's what I meant, then follow Mm -hmm. up with a question because once those questions are being asked, then it's really them coming. It's a self, it's a self-centered approach to them coming to the answer for themselves. And in that, you know, that's very empowering. It's very, you know, and I've been practicing it since I've been home, even with my son and he said to me and I didn't I wasn't really listening I was just validating and I was asking the question and the very end of it he's like all right mom I need to get some sleep but thank you so much for listening I love you and I wasn't really I didn't really listen to anything he was you know there wasn't a lot of talk about emotions thoughts or what he was feeling it was just Mm -hmm. me you know validating and then mm-hmm. asking a question and yeah, he said, thanks so much for listening. And I just thought that was like mm-hmm. very profound that, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. um, that approach. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> nice. Yeah. I did a coach approach once, but it was only for an hour and I loved it. So I'm glad you went to that one. That's yeah, great. That's great. Yeah. I went to, uh, a workshop sustainability from the start and and it was good um lots of good discussion about funding and and different things but there was a takeaway from it which in the company uh the the it was they have two executive directors it was one of the executive directors doing the class and um and they do this thing with these letters of support they they don't write letters of support they write letters of um how did she say it financial financial agreements or something like that like financial anyway um and meaning it's just like a reframe of the letter of support so somebody i get these all the times people call up and they're writing a grant and they need letters of support so they call you up and they ask you to write a letter of support okay but the way they twist it is, yes, we'll support your project. And how do you include us in your project? Nice. And, and, and there has to be something at, attached to it financially, 
meaning are you going to hire us for training or consultation or whatever? Anyway, their minimum is $5,000 per letter. And wow. I, I was thinking about it overnight. I went to that workshop and I actually ended up in another workshop that she was doing on a diff, totally different topic. And I shared it with her. I said, you know, I wrote six letters of support this year so far. So if I was using their method, that would be $30,000 in training or consultation. That's sustainability. That's revenue coming into my organization. She said, well, yeah, otherwise you're just writing them a letter of support for free. They get the grant and you may or may not be a part of it, right? But they just created this policy and they trained their staff in what to say, to say, we don't write letters of support you know um and so it was really cool and it stimulated this conversation at our table and nobody in the room did that there were no organizations that acknowledged it nobody at our table but we talked a lot about that and everybody was like yeah of course we write lots of letters of support and we ask for letters of support and you know um and it's just kind of a different way to think about that like a, it's more like a partnership but there has to be some kind of financial piece. Otherwise, I'm just supporting you and you're getting funding and and I'm really not. I'm vouching for you, but there's no, you know, so that was really like, I'm still like thinking about that and like, okay, so MPN could, you know, again, deliver training, deliver some consultation, something like that. But you have to write us into the grant, not just a letter of support. Like we have to be written into it if you want, if you want that to happen. And it's a bold step to do, right? That's a pretty bold step. Some people are going to be all on board right away. They're going to be like, mm -hmm. oh yeah, no problem. Of course, we're going to write, we're going to hire you and, you know, right? But then I can totally see like others like, oh, well, we don't have any money in the grant for that. And it's like, well, otherwise that we're sort of giving away our reputation as an organization, mm -hmm. right? Like, so that was really powerful for me um, and something we're going to integrate in the organization <laughs> where we're going to do that. I'm going to stop writing those letters. Um, and just think about it in a different, in a totally different way. So, yeah. Yeah. Well then um, wouldn't that also, if you're not just giving them a letter of support, you're actually wanting to work with them, partner with them. It really means that the, the programs that you are supporting, you really appreciate, or you really value you know value because you're going to be working mm -hmm. with these people for yes. however long and so yes. i think yeah i think it's really powerful yeah 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 it's interesting you know because it's like like when you think about sustainability in an organization when I mean, people think about grants and contracts and this but there are all these other you know fundraising right like but there are these other ways too because there's mm -hmm. all these other nonprofits, you know, right? They're applying for all kinds of funding and there's, and if you're applying for some $200,000, $500,000 grant, what's $5,000 if, if that's, you know what I mean? Like if you want my support, then there has to be something coming back the other way, kind of like mentality, like thinking about it in that sort of way. So anyway, I thought that was great. Um, that sustainability piece like that was, and she handed out all kinds of, there's like some worksheets and there's a toolkit and there's, there's all a whole bunch of stuff I got, but that's the one thing that like totally popped out for me um, that we're going to, we're going to start doing here in the new, in the new year. Like we're not, we're not writing any more letters of support <laughs> like that, you know? Yeah. Now it's um, out there. I, you know, like, yeah, it was, it was, it was good. It was really good. Um, the other, the other workshop that, that really moved me was the stop lying to me one. Mm -hmm. and, you and, and I went to that together. Yeah. And it was weird because I wasn't going to that one. I was going to a different one and it, 
just, you know, just didn't work out. Kayla, you said it like, oh, I was meant to be in that workshop, you know, right? Like, and that's kind of how I feel about that one. A week later, this stopped lying to me. And, and it was just so powerful about, you know, not, not being um, defined by your diagnosis. And, um, and then just to hear such an inspiring program out of Arizona and the things mm-hmm. that they were doing and, and they, they, they weren't just talking about the program. They actually brought the youth to the conference to expose them to that. What did he say? 20, they brought 20 some people mm-hmm. to the conference. And you think, well, that's in Chicago. They came from Arizona. That was, that's a huge investment. That's a huge investment. I know what it costs for the three of us to go to the conference and that's a huge investment to bring people, but wow, the, the experience of that, you know, mm-hmm. and really just, I don't know, the way it was presented and like, just, yeah, everybody was into it. I don't know, Beth, you, you were in there. So I don't yeah, know. it was great. Yeah. I was impressed that he brought, well, he brought some of the folks that actually work with the youth but then mm-hmm. he also brought some of the board members, which I thought was really smart too. Yeah. Um, and one thing he said about the kids that I loved was he's like, he told them, you know, we're coming to this conference, not to just go have a good time. We're coming here mm-hmm. to serve, to hear, learn. And I thought that was really, um, really cool to kind of set that expectation up for them and all the youth. I mean, they were still youth and they were still having fun. But they really were participating in it. Um, a lot of there was three of them that were brave enough to get up and speak in front of our group. Um, yeah. And so, yeah, he's really I guess what I took it from him is he is creating people just like him. Like when he's through working, he's going to have all of these, you know, youth who then yep. become adults to yeah. you know, follow. And that yeah. was just really neat. Yeah. Yeah. Reach, reach family services was the name of the company. And that room was packed. Yeah. He should have been in one of the larger rooms really presenting because that room, there was no seats. It was standing room only. It was, it was packed. Mm -hmm. And that took a lot of courage for those, uh, the youth to get up and share the things that they did. Yeah. I mean, it was, it was, it was a full house. And so I would definitely go and see him again, you Mm -hmm. know, next year. Like I would seek out his, his workshop for sure. So yeah. Kayla, what, what about you? What other takeaways? Yeah. Um, I went, it was kind of funny because like one of the ones, there was a bunch during the same time that I was like, oh man, that one, that one looks good. This one looks good. And then there was like one block during the day that nothing really was like grabbing at me. Mm-hmm. And I did go to something and and it was, it was, it was good, but it was, I think for me, the reflection that I had afterwards was that the people in the room were at the, more at the beginning of their journeys within this work or, or within mm-hmm. looking like inward at them, at themselves, because in this work, you have to do it constantly. You have to look inward and say like, am I being my best right now? Am I thinking my best? Am I mm-hmm. treating myself the best? And mm-hmm. because that's going to be a reflection within helping the same, you know, and guiding the same conversations out of others is like, we can't, we have to practice what we preach basically. Mm-hmm. Um, so I think it was a really good reflection of like, cause I think it, I think no matter how, far we get in any journey in our lives like whether it's career or um you know with our kids or you know accomplishments I think we are we are harder on ourselves than anybody else could be and so I think it was a really good reminder for me of how just how far I have come because seeing an example of it in the room of Mm -hmm. how how you know, and it's not, it wasn't like a judgment thing, like, oh, these people have so much work to do. It wasn't, that. it was just a very like, but they're in the right place and they're on the right journey and on the right path to mm-hmm. do. Um, And I think it was just a really good reminder for me how far I've come. And then mm-hmm. I was able to speak up in a lot of areas and, you know, I had 
a lot of people were looking at me for not an answer, but like my experience and what has worked for me and what, um, yeah, so that was kind of cool. But my, nice. I went, I did go to that follow-up, um, that follow-up, uh, coach approach and adaptive to coach approach mm -hmm. and adaptive leadership, but it was called mm -hmm. strengthening volunteer relationships through coaching. So it was just kind of like another, and, um, I don't, I think this is more of a like spiritual and like self-realization for me in that class. So like, I think we constantly in society, I think it's a very cliche thing like, oh, I'm healing and I'm learning and I'm growing and I'm, you know, and yes, while I do think that healing is the correct term for it, I think mm -hmm. what people, people, um, I know what the way it felt for me was that like, oh, I need to change. There, a change needs to be made. Mm -hmm. And I think that when I was thinking of, of a value system within me, so I have my values that I brought into this world when I was born. I am, I've always been who I, who I was and who I am today is the same. I have the same values. Yes, they may have like swayed here and there and but I think that they've swayed because the way that I either let somebody uh, cross my values or um, I didn't deal with it in the proper way and there was consequences, or maybe I dealt with it really, really well. I think internally, our value system has always been the same. I think now it's like earning those tools in my toolbox to better align myself with my values and to do it differently the next time. And so mm -hmm. I don't think it's change who you are. I think it's change and realign to better serve your values internally, because I think that those are always just within us and who, who we are as, as human beings. So I just thought it was like, it was a very like, um, what is that when you kind of like come full circle within a thought process mm -hmm. or on a journey mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. with your own, yeah, when you're with your own self-discovery. There we go. I think that's a better nice. word than healing. Um, mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, and, and it was just very intricate with like values and like how we can like snag other people's, like we can value bump, that like kind of bump, like bumper cars. Um, and yeah, there was just a lot of analogies and terms within that. And so how to recognize it when you, can see it now that like maybe I just value bumped with this individual um, and kind of taking a step back and like trying to see and ask those questions to understand what their values are and why, um, why that feels so big for them. So yeah. Right. Yeah. That's Excellent. awesome. That sounds like yeah. a really great one. Yeah. yeah. That's why I stayed for what seven hours of <laughs> workshops. <laughs> like I said, it was like right where, right where I needed to be. And that one was a lot, the class the day before was a lot bigger. And this class was a lot more, um, it was a lot, you guys should have had our group. We should have swapped rooms because <laughs> it wasn't as, ours wasn't as busy. But um, once again, it was like right where I needed to be. Yeah. 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 So. I think the thing I've loved about the conference is that I am a, you know, fam, I have a, I have children with uh, behavioral health challenges. I also am a family peer supporter. So I work with families. And then I also kind of am, I don't want to say spearheading, but just really like trying to move family peer support forward in Montana. Mm -hmm. And so it just feels like when I go to those that every workshop would apply to me and every, I just, yeah, it's, it's, uh, they have a lot of options too for workshops. So sometimes it's hard. There's like six or seven at the same time. Yeah. Um, one of the other ones I went to was talking about creating a supportive workplace for family peer supporters. And I think that um, as somebody with lived experience, working within um, a team or a clinic looks a little bit different. Um, at the same time, though, I think the things that I need from my employer because I have lived experience are probably things that every employee needs, but we don't really have them in place. So it really talked about, you know, having those policies that reflect 
the fact that we are family peer supporters, not because that's our job, but because that's who we are and we have children that are going to, you know, have different, um, you know, they'll have crisis, they'll have, you know, appointments, mm-hmm. different needs like that. And, mm-hmm. and really creating an environment that allows me to do my job there, but then also allows me to also do my other job, which is taking care of my child. Right. Um, and granted, that might be more of a full-time job for me, but everybody who has children has, you know, times where they have to take care of them or everybody, you mm-hmm. know, within themselves has, you know, time where they have to take care of themselves. And so that was really interesting to just kind of see how we can change some of the corporate or company um, you know, policies to kind of help everybody with mm-hmm. their own health and wellness. And then the other um, part that they talked about was really providing career um, career advancement opportunities, I think, for family peer support and maybe behavioral health peer support. We've um, fought for these jobs, but then there's really no growth like we can't you know we can be a family peer supporter but then what like that's kind of all there is and so really creating that career path um and just how important that is um for us so yeah I took a lot out of that one nice yeah yeah there's a lot of great you mentioned a lot of great great things and just yeah there's a lot of workforce growth needed there, but there's also like society and how we look at that. And, and then it makes me think about the, the growth of, of the profession of peer support also, because that's Mm -hmm. what we're talking about, right? It's a new, it's a newer profession and we're just sort of learning how does this fit in, not just today, but in the future how do people grow in their own careers? Otherwise it just stays this entry level position and and there has to be more. We have to be encouraging people. Yeah, that's great. That's great. They they talked about that a lot at the beginning of the first workshop that I went to Um, that leading can really come from any chair. I think leadership is thought of as like this hierarchy system and yes, like let's say MPN, for example, like there, we all have titles and with that title is a different expectation for each person. Um, but really, you know, every person, if we change our mindset, every person can be a teacher and a learner mm-hmm. within a system within like MPN, for example. And um, it was a really good reminder that, um, and I've, I've known just in the time that I've worked at MPN, the amount of growth that I've had with my own voice and thoughts and also self-reflection on the things that I was lacking on and not doing my best job. And I was using it as an excuse to just keep staying stagnant. Um, I, I think that when there is that, um, you know, environment that leading can come from any chair um, and my thoughts and my voice matters and I'm, you know, safe, seen and heard. Um, I think that that's where change, change can happen. And, um, I think only by changing how we think and how we hear feedback is the only way to change policies and practices that have been established in our, in our society. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's what I love, number one, about this organization. And number two, about what we do with families is that it's very mutual. You know, we all have different set of skills. We all have different Mm -hmm. responsibilities. But who we are as humans and how we're valued is the same. And I've really, that kind of plays into, um, I used to look at people that did workshops as like, oh, they're the professionals or, oh, they're the experts. And, you know, I couldn't ever do that because I'm not at their level. Um, and then realizing, know that they just have, you know, something that they can offer to everybody else. And everybody has that. Everybody has something mm-hmm. they can offer. And so um, I ended up doing a workshop at the at this conference um, with some folks from uh, family task force out in, uh, out in Pennsylvania. Mm-hmm. And I've been working with them for about a year. And so we did a, a workshop on um, creating the certification you know, how to get task force started, kind of those sort of things in place. Um, and it went really well. I was really um, excited for it. 
But um, if you had asked me if I was able or capable or would I even want to do that a couple of years ago, I would have said, you know, like who, like, you know, I'm not as important as all the other people that are doing, you know, presentations and workshops. I don't have anything to offer. And um, yeah, it was the, everybody in there was really interested and I hope took away a lot of things to help them in their own work. Um, but yeah, it was, it's, it's definitely changed how I look at just, yeah, what people have, I guess, what people have to yeah. you know, present and offer. Yeah. Yeah. Somewhere across the country, there's people doing their own takeaways in meetings and videos. And one of them is saying, yeah, I went to this great workshop with Montana and <laughs> Pennsylvania, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, there's something to that, right? With the, uh, it's the expert from out of town. It's mm -hmm. that, it's that sort of mentality. It's like, oh, we, we don't have the knowledge here, you know, but we'll, we'll hire somebody from somewhere else to come here and teach us what we already know. But they have these fancy slides, you know, and right. <laughs> like that kind of thinking, like, you know, yeah. Somehow their PowerPoint is different than our PowerPoint. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. You, well, you did a great job. Um, Thank you. And and that room was full of people, too. I mean, that was it was it was great. And so, yeah, you should be really proud of yourself and all the work that you've done um, and getting to share that with people and being. Mm -hmm. Uh, an inspiration to them. I can only assume the people who are there, they're there because they want to bring certification to their state. Right. And so that's why you would go to that kind of a workshop. So, yeah, I mean, it's, um, it's, it's a great experience for sure. It was. Yeah. And that makes me, it, um, I think also showed me too, just where family peer support is across the U S and how many people are really interested in getting it, you know, certified, professionalized, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it mm -hmm. makes me hopeful that there's a lot of, you know, forward movement. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. I also enjoyed just spending time with the two of you. you know, yeah. That, that was neat too, you know, um, because we work, separately you know we're not in the same office building i don't get to spend time with the two of you other than like this like meetings and on mm -hmm. the zoom so that was also really neat for me that's another one of my takeaways is just you know spending that personal time or downtime uh in between workshops and the meals and and that was really good so thank you both for that yeah, yeah, thank you. Thank it was you. fun. That was the other thing is seeing people that I've only seen on Zoom for the last however long I've known them and actually seeing them in person was really neat. <laughs> but yeah, we had so much fun running around Chicago and just trying the different things and yeah, um, hanging out. Yeah, it was good. It was. It was. Yeah. Yeah. Running around Chicago. I really <laughs> ran around Chicago. <laughs> <laughs> I really ran. The rest of us walked and you <laughs> and you ran around. No, Chicago. I took every I I took the yeah. term uh planes, trains, and automobiles <laughs> to a whole new <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Just on yeah. Saturday alone. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You definitely got the mileage award for that. Yes. For sure. Yeah. And we got the shortest Uber ride award too, which was yes. you so did. We were closer you did. than we thought. You did. You did. Yeah. Well, it's, yeah. It's, no, it's, it's good. a different. I mean, I've been to Chicago before, but you forget once you're out of it, you know, it is a different. It, it, it is that like go, go, go all day, every mm -hmm. day where there's, oh, yeah. you know, a restaurant on a block is like, you know, our building alone had three restaurants and just, and a block is not a block like it is downtown Billings or downtown, you know, yeah. Bo even yeah. Bozeman. Yeah, it is. Yeah. yeah. It's a yeah. lot of, um, a lot of culture and a lot. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. the buildings are incredible there just even I think just the atmosphere in Chicago is inspiring and um, yeah it's I think all I don't I know I talked to you guys since the conference but I think because of that because it's super stimulating when you're there and obviously we're excited to be at the conference and mm -hmm. I think any trip you're going on is exciting but Man, when I got back, I, it took me, it took me a lot of days to come down off of that, like, 
you know, just that, yeah, stimulating environment where like, right. there's so much to look at, even just in a like, looking forward, then looking up and around and behind. You. Yeah, it's yeah. Yeah. It was, it was good so, though. Yeah, yeah. So next year, the conference is going to yes. be down in Orlando, Florida. So yep. it would be, um, yeah, it would be exciting that another great city with mm -hmm. lots of stuff to do. So yeah, hopefully we can make that happen because I really time. enjoyed the conference. Yeah. So I think a couple of years ago, one, um, another gal that works for MPN and I did it um, virtual, mm -hmm. I believe. Mm -hmm. But I mean, everybody that has been a part of it has always um, said like it is the best conference that they've ever been to. It just mm -hmm. has so much in it and so many just good workshops and good networking. And yeah, yeah. it's it's yeah. a really cool work. It's a really cool yeah. conference. Yeah. yeah. Cool. All right. And it'll be well, warmer down in Orlando. Well, I, yeah, it, it wasn't, it was it could, it could have been a lot colder yes. in Chicago. November in Chicago could be really cold with the wind coming off the lake. So, but it will definitely be warmer in Orlando. <laughs> yeah. For sure. I think it was cool being around the two individuals that did spearhead. I think that is a great word, but to use spearhead peer support and family peer support in the state of Montana in that environment. I think, I think I look at you guys as inspiration for your guys's um, approach and then actually like setting out and making it happen. And it was really cool to, yeah, to see you guys in that role, but then also inspired and, um, you know, learning and taking in, um, I, it's not that I don't think that that can happen. I think it is just good to be in environments where you see, yeah, people as people as and people. yeah, learning and growing and um, yeah. 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 Sharing experiences. It was really great sharing it with you guys. Yeah. That's good. Thanks for letting me take along. Sorry, I had to walk so much. <laughs> well, it was. It wasn't your guys' fault. <laughs> well, thank, thank you, everybody, for tuning in to another episode, Recovery Talks podcast from Montana's Peer Network. And thanks to both of you, Beth and Kayla. And um, catch us again on another podcast where we'll be talking about another, another exciting topic. And uh, thanks for listening. Thanks, guys. Thanks. What family peer support means to me is being the person that I wish that I would have had when I was walking a very lonely and isolating road.